We have an appeals court that just struck down unlawful users for marijuana for controlled substances. We've got situations across the board when you zoom out against this exact same thing. If we look at this on a macro level, I'm about to show you how this is not just a one-off around Mary J. This is about something much larger around our Second Amendment rights. Stay tuned and everything will be linked in the description box below as soon as I can paint this picture for you. Let me know if I land this plane. And of course, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. Distributing freedom twice daily, and we would love to have you along for the ride. All right, so let's get into what happened. This broke yesterday, and this is important when you look at everything that happened in the periphery, okay? Check this out. Appeals court rules against long-standing drug user gun ban cited in the Hunter Biden case. Now, they're talking about unlawful users on this 4473, the ownership of Second Amendment rights with the... In, with the audacity of marijuana okay that's what they're doing so this is where it gets really interesting because when you zoom out let me show you a few of the backstories we've covered over the past six months to 12 months and you can start to see something that's happening and the media is not happy about it check this out so here's the first one could hunter biden be the next poster child for second amendment rights now this entire story was about how hunter biden came out and tried to get around his convictions for unlawful user or unlawful substances while being a firearm owner and he cited the bruin decision that was the entire point of this entire line of article writing so that's one piece you've got biden himself coming out and doing it and then you have this from about a couple years ago well a year and a half ago Nikki Freed, who was the agriculture, the commissioner of agriculture in Florida, Nikki Freed defends gun rights of medical marijuana users in lawsuit against the Biden administration because it was discriminatory. Floridians using medical marijuana have Second Amendment rights violated lawsuits claim. Now, as you go into this, let's just take the entire point here of the Mary J. Okay. You have this now being distributed as an actual remedy for things, you know, like prescriptions, and it's legal in certain states, but on the federal level, you have it, you can't have a 4473 file filled out correctly, or you're going to federal prison, unless, of course, you're Hunter Biden. So there's a conflict between federal 4473, which is ATF, and that's the form to buy a gun, and you have state level, which is basically saying, hey, it can actually be a medical application, here's a prescription, and it's perfectly legal. Well, you've got a bit of a problem there. And that's what we're seeing. Now, the media, as we get into this, they're trying to paint this as much as they can about the extremist courts and how the Bruin decision is rewriting the fabric of our nation through an expansion of Second Amendment gun rights, which is not at all what they did. What we're seeing right now is that conflict between federal and state showing up across the board because Second Amendment rights can't just be infringed because... 150 years ago, some lawmakers didn't like marijuana because it was used in ceremonies of Native Americans. Let's get into this. All right. A federal appeals court has ruled that drug users shouldn't automatically be banned from having guns, marking the latest sign of upheaval in the nation's firearm legal landscape and raising questions about a law cited in the case against Hunter Biden. Now, we covered the Hunter Biden thing. I'm not going to relitigate that right this second. But keep in mind, exactly what we're about to cover is not only about the Mary J usage or the, un or the controlled substances. What we're going to be dealing with right now is something else that's important also when you look at what has happened prior around domestic abusers. This entire thing is all related. This is important to understand the strings that are tying together. The opinion overturns the conviction of a Mississippi man, Patrick D. Daniels of Gulfport, who had two guns found in his car during a traffic stop last year and acknowledged using marijuana regularly, but wasn't accused of driving under the influence, was not under the influence, had used it in the past, but he had Second Amendment rights, arrested. Okay, so he wasn't actively under the influence, but because he had done it in the past, well, you can't have your rights. That's an interesting one, particularly since in certain states it's perfectly legal. Let's continue. We're going to tie all this together in a second. Quote, our history and tradition may support some limits on an intoxicated person's right to carry a weapon, but it does not justify disarming a sober citizen based exclusively on his past drug usage. The three-judge panel for the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans wrote in Wednesday's ruling. Now, the reason this is such a big deal is that's the Fifth Circuit again. The Fifth Circuit is coming out and applying Bruin to almost every single 
issue around guns that we have, including the domestic domestic abusers case, which the media lost their minds about. So this is the last piece. I'm going to tie this together right now. The Fifth Circuit, moreover, also ruled in February that the government can't stop people who have domestic violence restraining orders against them from owning guns. The Supreme Court has agreed to hear the Biden administration's appeal in that case. The big underlying theme in all of this with the domestic abusers that was a, um, those under accusation they were not convicted they were not convicted by state of by um, a jury of their peers no court no nothing couldn't defend themselves that's why it was overturned then you have the controlled substances in the marijuana situation here when you have the lawsuits from florida you have hunter biden using it in the supreme court or in the cases for himself all of these things are coming to the exact same point you cannot infringe upon the Second Amendment rights of an entire citizenry based on past transgressions, unless you're talking about felony stuff. I'm talking about specifically marijuana usage when it's legal at state level and illegal at federal level. And the 4473s carry the felony penalty if you lie on them. So, unless you're Hunter Biden. Now, that's the big thing here. The Bruin decision is calling into question well-established norms and accepted infringements from the population over the last decades. The more that this continues from the Fifth Circuit, the more this is going to percolate out. When you've got 18 to 20-year-olds being discriminated against because of their age in firearm purchasing, that's coming up. You've got domestic abusers. not They're accused. They are not convicted. And then you have medical marijuana users also being discriminated against. All of these things... This is a long-term pattern of victory as it comes down the road. This is not something where you want the wild, wild west, which is what the media will tell you. That's why this is so important. Because as this goes forward, you're going to start to see it curtail, go backwards, away from the gun infringements and towards the gun's rights side of the argument. Because without convictions, you can't take rights. And that's what they've been doing for decades. And that is why this is so important. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and if I landed that plane and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.